So ventilation is the key to preventing winter COVID. There's a Wall Street Journal article and an excellent video just the other day. You may want to look at it. 1123 is the date. And the headline is, ventilation is key to battling COVID. Here's why. Again, the point is masking and distancing are good, but they are not good enough. It's a decades old theory. Centers for Disease Control also weighing in saying that ventilation counts. And again, growing evidence that inborn transmission associated with small micron scale aerosol droplets play a dominant role in indoor super spreading events. To give you a sense of size, the virus is 0.125 microns. When they test these N95 masks, they test it with sodium chloride, which is 0.075. So just scale wise, 0.125 for the virus, 0.075 for the testing article. And it shows that you're able to stop things smaller than the, uh, you know, the coronavirus here. So beyond six feet, there's definitely a risk. Let's look at why here. This is a very, very, very complex fluid chemistry. Here you have no mask. And you see, of course, the viral particles going out. If you say B or P, the viral particles will go up. If you say V, they go down. That's no mask. But look what happens with a mask. It's a mistake to think that the mask is stopping the particles. It's simply stopping them from going forward. What happens is that they go up. Now, here from yesterday is this Washington Post article. You can see with exhalation, you have all of the, the flow coming out of the mask and going upwards. And here it's an excellent paper. If you read only one paper, I would read this. This is out of Cambridge University. Uh, it's a very interesting field of uh, fluid mechanics. And you see what happens. And this is the way to think of your students. Don't think of the risk as emanating out from them from one student to another. Think of each student as having a plume and yourself as having a plume over your head that is rising up to the ceiling. And with that, you have viral particles and that slowly descends down into the classroom, increasing risk. So you want fresh incoming air, or it could be ventilated air, but you want fresh air coming in. And what Dave and I found was that if we open the upper parts of the windows, and he cautions, you don't want to do this yourself. You want uh, Mike to come around in the morning and, and open them up, or maybe we can get a parent committee. But in any case, you have hot air exits. We found tremendous flow out of the room if we open the upper window. So increasing the air exchange is key, uh, three to six per hour. Another great resource is the Harvard Healthy Buildings Program. And what's interesting is, you know, this has been outside of everybody's domain. The infectious disease people haven't usually gotten into this. The HVAC people, the mechanical engineers haven't gotten into it. It's really a very different field of biophysics, fluid mechanics, and physical chemistry. And this is just the looks of one of these units here. Uh, again, opening windows are a good option. Titrating the classroom is what I'm calling it. I would like to call it. And we'd love to work with you if you have a, I think the big thing I always tell patients is if they come to me with some terrible diagnosis, I say, look it, knowledge is going to reassure you. And I know that many of you are concerned and very fearful and worried, rightfully so, about this pandemic and your risk. What I would say, look at, I'm at super high risk because uh, I have uh, chronic terrible asthma. Uh, and, and yet I, with confidence, walk through classrooms because I'm just, I'm not concerned. I think that, I think that Nina and Dave and Mike done a phenomenal job in your school there. And it's simply a matter of titrating these classrooms. If you're worried about the classroom, send Nina a note. We can talk directly. Be glad to get you one of these fast response meters. Glad to, you know, open upper and lower windows. Obviously less opening when it's really cold outside, more when it's warmer outside. You'll have the new ventilation units. You're going to have these, uh, if you don't already, you'll have some of these uh, uh, HEPA filters. Uh, so it is a matter of titrating the classroom. The HEPA filters, 99.97% of airborne particles are removed. And you can supplement your ventilation system with a HEPA filter. That is, you want to get to six air exchanges an hour. So let's say you had, you know, two with a HEPA filter and three with the ventilation system would get you up to five. Here's just some technical details saying that they do stop particles at 0.3 microns. And again, in terms of scale, COVID is 0.125.
So it's slightly bigger than this, but there are many different ways that it impacts it. It impacts it through inertial impaction, diffusion, interception, electrostatic deposition, lots of different ways that the filter is working, even if it isn't quite small enough for the virus itself. Now, the HVAC filters, the ones you had in this system in the spring, these are MERV 8s, uh, which didn't really stop much in the way of COVID. You now have MERV 13s, that stops 80% of virus. The MERV 17, 0.3, but the system you have doesn't have the power to use those. And again, COVID being at 0.125. Parents are probably your biggest risk. And I think that they want to have improved quality of masking uh, when they send their children in. Uh, they're probably the number one risk to your school, especially if they have older kids coming home from college or high school or partying. Uh, they need to practice careful distancing. They need to stay out of closed indoor spaces. You saw in that labored long presentation of all those indoor, indoor spaces. You can imagine if you went to a sandwich shop or you went to a doctor's office with that kind of lethal air in there, you're putting yourself at risk, which is why uh, the governor has rightfully indicated we should really stay out of each other's homes. Of course, keep uh, sick kids home and be honest. And as Nita's found out, kids are more honest than their parents. So probably ask them first. 